Hey everyone and welcome to a review of Ransom by Lois Duncan. This was originally published in 1966. I believe in a previous video I said I believe that it was 1969. It's actually 1966. Um, this is rather short. It's 172 pages at least for this particular edition. Now I enjoy the story. I ended up giving this one three stars. I think if I would have only re physically read it, it would have possibly been a higher three star, but it's just a flat three star. Um, and I did listen to a Audible original, which honestly, listening to the audio, the Audible original while I read along was a mistake. <laughs> so, and I'll go into that more in a little bit. So, Ransom by Lois Duncan, this is about, um, it's basically at the end of a school day. All the kids get on the bus, there's a new bus driver, and he's, um, hi Max. He's obviously, obviously new because he doesn't know the stops and wasn't trained for the stops, and so he misses it makes the kids walk a, little, walk a little bit further, and then one of the kids volunteers to help tell him where the stops are. The last stop is what the bus driver is more interested in, and rather than stopping at the last stop, the bus driver continues on. Um, and then they pick up another person um, who is an adult who has a gun, and hence the kidnapping of these children from the last stop continue. The last, or starts, the last stop is important because these kids are from a community where people tend to be um, more well off <clears throat> financially. And so they're going to hold these kids hostage so that they can get a ransom. Now, the... In this book, you if you decide to physically read this book, you need to keep in mind that this was published in 1966. So there are some things that would be a little... I don't really want... I want... Yeah, outdated, you know. Because one of the things is they're asking... In the physical book, they're asking for $15,000 $15, per child. And these are high school kids. Um... And fifteen thousand per child to be able to return them to their family. Nowadays, it being twenty twenty two, I don't know if someone that's holding someone hostage would only ask for fifteen thousand. I think they would ask for more, like oh, I don't know, fifty, hundred, thousand, something like that. Um, so quite a bit more financially. But keeping in mind when this was published. 15,000 is probably more equivalent to 50 or 60,000 in today's society with all the inflation and stuff. So there's that. That's really the only thing. I mean, there are some references when it comes to like trying to contact the parents of the children or their guardians for the ransom. They're obviously calling what we now refer to as a landline because we also have the cell phones. Landlines are becoming more and more obsolete as time continues. <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> um, and more and more people are using cell phones, and so it would be easier to get a hold of the parents via a cell phone um, rather than a landline, because if the person is away in a meeting and you don't know when they're going to be home, you know, it's everything's just stuck on that. And there's references to a certain family member, like them not being able to get a hold of them, not knowing where they are. Well, with the cell phone, it'd be it'd pretty much be the same thing, but you would also add in they're not responding to any text messages, I, you know, or something like that because you know more than likely if you're trying to get a hold of someone and they're not answering, you're going to text them. <laughs> so, <clears throat> that's another big difference. Um And that's, that's really it. There's no reference to particular, not really any articles of clothing. I mean, there's a jacket, but it's not 
something that you would read and go, oh, those that clothing they're wearing is from the 60s, from the 50s, from the 70s, or wherever it is. It's not um, described to the point where you know what style it is and being able to reference and pick up on what decade the style is from. Same thing with the hairstyles and things like that. So you don't get that type of a description. Um, or anything like that. So obviously a big trigger warning is for kidnapping of kids. Granted again they are high school kids but still I know that that can be bothering for some people. Um, there is one point where someone does get injured and so I mean there's there's that. It's like attempted murder of a, of, of a high schooler. Um, so you do have that as well. But it does not really go into a lot of description um, or anything like that. So, but I do remember when I first read this, I was in like junior high and I was, I remember being so tense and scared and worried and that, you know, and now looking back at this with it being a YA book, I can go, okay, it's not so, so bad now. Now this go around that I've read it. And this is, I don't know how many times I've reread this, but now with listening to the audiobook, there are some changes that Audible tried to make that I think were not needed. They tried to, in a way, try to modernize this book. Don't. <laughs> there are some things where it's like, it's kind of pointless people are smart and the pe the group that would read this are smarter than you think they are they may go oh wow 15,000 and if they bring that up with someone they'll go oh well that's you know the, it's it would be a great learning experience in my opinion for them to say they're only asking for 15,000 but hey look at all this inflation we have going on they'd probably be more asking for like 50 to 70 to or 60 or something today Four thousand per head and so a little bit of learning there and I think in my opinion the fact that there's no cell phones in this story makes it could make it possibly more thrilling um, and suspenseful because you're very limited with how you can contact certain people um, and so in the audiobook they tried to add cell phones a couple of times and it just did not work. The editing of that, of trying to modernize it, really sucked, <laughs> in my opinion. Um, and another thing is it's like in this book, one of the vehicles you have that is described is called a station wagon. In the audiobook they just said van. What? What's the point? Okay, so if station wagons aren't being made, leave it in there. And if whoever's reading it doesn't know what a station wagon is, they can look it up. <laughs> Information is right at their fingertips. They can look it up. So <laughs> I, I think it was a huge mistake for Audible to try to modernize this. It's, and by doing so, in my opinion, it made the story worse. Hence why I'm, I, I, I <sighs> Like, if I was going off of the Audible, I would have given this, like, a one or a two star. But knowing how it was supposed to be written, I gave it a three star. Now, could it, again, could it have been a little bit more due to nostalgia? Probably. But that audiobook I, is, like, I think on Audible, I actually gave the audiobook one star, um, but the physical book I'm giving a three and I think it was weighted a little lower because of the audiobook. So the other thing with the audiobook is there is a huge editing issue. You have a female narrator. At times the narrator got quite annoying. You couldn't tell certain voices apart and not you and that's not the case with every narrator. Um but which was fine. It's just that how she tried to differentiate the voices got very annoying. But the big, um, big issue with the editing is that the start of, I think it was chapter two, 
two or three, and I think it was chapter two, was there, I don't know, could be three, I don't know, regardless, at one of the first few chapters, there's this point where you have this female narrator going along, and then all of a sudden you get this deep, gravelly male voice, and it goes for a second, and then it's back to the female narrator, and there's nothing to indicate that there's going to be growling in the book. So, huge, huge editing issue. That, in my opinion, is a big enough thing. And it's not like a subtle, like, underlying while the narrator's talking. No, you have the narrator, a whole paragraph, which is like two sentences, is eliminated because you have this, like, growling almost. So that is a huge error on the editor, and I think that that type of an editing issue is inexcusable for an audiobook. So, yeah, I avoid, <coughs> whoa, <laughs> avoid the audiobook for this at all costs, in my opinion. I think if they're going to do the, at least the Audible original version, if they want to make this into an audiobook, they need to do it word for word um, and not try to modernize this. Just read it like it is, like a standard audiobook, which it, as of when I am filming this and when I was listening to this did not exist. The Audible original was the only option, and that's the one I say avoid. Um, but I think if you can just read this physically and knowing that it was written in the six, 1966, you'll enjoy it so much more. Um, and that's really it. Obviously, you know, it does read a little younger, but again, you know, I am, <laughs> I'm definitely an adult, and so it does definitely read a little younger, but I do remember feeling very tense um, and things like that. Now, I have looked at other audiobooks for um, other thrillers that Lois Duncan has written, and they are not Audible Originals, so another, um, when I pick up another book by Lois Duncan in the future, I will give Audible another try as long as it is not an Audible original. Um, but I, I may decide not to even try it and risk anything. But it's also kind of one of the things where it's like, if I like the narrators of the audiobook, I would like to, you know, have it on Audible or Scribd. Um, so that when I'm on a road trip or something, that's an option to listen to in the car. So I do like to slowly try and, you know, and collect that. And plus sometimes I do read things, understand things a little bit better when I read along while I listen to the audiobook. But seeing that this is definitely written for a younger audience and it is very short and when it was written, it's not going to be any problem or any issues for me to understand any of it. It's just nice to have an audio version. So but yeah so definitely avoid the audible original and read only the physical book if you're going to do that so uh, the tagline on the cover is five students kidnapped four families torn apart um, one thing I did like about this is you have a mix of types of family dynamics you have someone that lives with neither of their parents um, lives with a different family member. You have someone who has a mom and a stepdad. Dad is out of the picture. You have an army family. You have, you know, and then I think just a standard mother-father relationship as well. So you have a little bit of a dynamics, you know, you have so, you know, the you have the divorce represented, you have death of parents represented, and it's just very lightly mentioned, um, and things like that. So it's not all cookie cutter as far as that goes. So that was one thing that was really good. So yeah, as of right now, it's going to be a three star. I do recommend the book. Um, just again, not the audio book. And I don't how many time, know how many times I'm going to say, do not read the Audible original. It's awful. So yeah, that'll be it for this review. If you have read this, let me know what your thoughts are on this. If you've read any other Lois Duncan books, definitely let me know what your favorite Lois Duncan book is. So until next time, stay true to yourself and enjoy a good book. And I'll talk to you later.